Man, No Jump Kirby might be my new favorite way to play Kirby now. I mean, it's just such an interesting challenge, and also adds some much needed difficulty to your standard Kirby experience. And honestly, I haven't had enough yet, so today, let's continue our Kirby No Jump journey by finding out together, is it possible to beat Kirby's star allies without jumping? Now, if you haven't already seen it, I already attempted this challenge on Kirby's Return to Dreamland, and the rules here are basically the same. No using the move Jump slash Hover. Anything else in the game is acceptable. The main difference in the rules this time around stems from the fact that since Star Allies is all about the power of friendship, and thus features AI companions following us around for most of the game, we need to decide if them jumping is against the rules. And I say no. Our friends can jump to their heart's content, so long as no human-controlled characters jump, we're good. So yeah, just like last time, our first priority is getting a copy ability that yields us a jump replacement. So let's start level 1 and get on that. Oh. We can't get past the jump tutorial without jumping. Kirby's default moveset doesn't have any moves that get us the height we need to get over this obstacle. And this being the first obstacle in the first level, we don't have access to any copy abilities that might help us. I tried using multiplayer, but you can't actually join in a second player until you've made a friend, which we can't do yet. I even tried using amiibo, but they just give food and puzzle pieces, which doesn't help us here. Is it too late to change this video to what is the minimum number of jumps required to beat Kirby Star Allies? Okay, okay, we don't need to go through that again. Unfortunately, it would seem that this first jump is unavoidable. And the second one. What about the third one? Here we can finally start pulling out some tricks. Allow me to present to you the art of pushing and being pushed. You see, in Kirby Star Allies, when a Kirby collides with an enemy, they both get knocked away from each other. This knockback is useful on two counts. Firstly, it allows us to affect the position of an enemy and put them in the most advantageous position for our purposes. In this case, an otherwise stationary Waddle Dee. Secondly, when Kirby is pushed by an enemy, he experiences a small amount of upwards movement, which is enough to clear obstacles approximately one Kirby tall. I'm sure you can see where this is going. If we run into this Waddle Dee, we can push it right next to this block. With the Waddle Dee in that position, we can utilize the dodge ability to get on the right side of the Waddle Dee and get pushed onto the block. From here, if we stand on the very edge of the block, we can once again dodge, this time to clear the gap. There's now only one more jump left between us and our first copy ability. And compared to the previous one, this one's easy to skip. All we have to do is get on the right side of this patrolling mushroom, then wait for it to push us up onto the ledge. Now we can consume the Blade Knight, and finally we have our first copy ability, Sword. Sword gives us access to the Upward Slash and Drill Stab, as well as a few other useful moves, but these two are our bread and butter with Sword. The Upward Slash allows us vertical movement comparable to the height of a regular jump, while the Drill Stab can get us over relatively small gaps with ease. On the surface, it seems about the same as it was in Return to Dreamland. However, there is one major difference this time around. We can't jump infinitely with it anymore. We can use it while in the air in order to cross somewhat long gaps, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't manage to gain or even maintain height in the long run. It's still useful for clearing simple platforming challenges, but no flight is sure to be a drag going forward. Moving on with level, our next major obstacle is the flying tutorial. It's slightly too high to get over with a single upward slash, 
but I found that if you spam the move while holding up and right, it is possible to clear the flying tutorial. Not long after the flying tutorial comes these chain things we have to grab, and guess what? They're just out of reach of an upward slash no matter how many times I spam it. Luckily, if you do a down attack immediately after an upward slash, you perform a sword dive, which, before diving to the ground, gives us the extra height we need to pull on a chain and reveal... a ladder that's even higher up. Look guys, I tried a lot to make this work. I tried going infinite, but you just can't. I thought that maybe I could try riding an ally, but as it turns out, you can only ride an ally if you jump onto them. You can't get on by falling from an upward slash or a higher platform. I tried blindly upward slashing while the barrier fell, but could never manage to grab the ladder. So then, is this jump number three? It seems like it. And it really is unfortunate, because with some better copy abilities, this obstacle would be no problem. But alas, this is still level 1, so we are very limited in what abilities we have access to. If we could use a Dream Palace, this would be easy, but right now we don't have one of those unlocked. As it stands, we only have access to Bomb, Sword, and Cutter. There is simply no way to clear this obstacle without jumping by using these abilities. But are those really the only copy abilities we have access to? Have you ever heard of a copy ability mix? As you probably already know, Kirby games allow you to gain copy abilities by eating enemies which possess said abilities. But what happens when you consume two enemies with different abilities at the same time? In most Kirby games, Star Allies included, a copy ability mix occurs, during which Kirby is granted a random copy ability from a pool of every copy ability in the game. If one were able to reliably set up a scenario where this happened, then you could just repeat the process until you get the desired copy ability. So the question then becomes, can we engineer such a scenario in this level? Now, it's tough because up to this point all enemies we've encountered that can grant us copy abilities have been stationary, and a bit of a distance away from each other. But it can be done. On the second screen of the level, right where the hill that the Sir Kibble stands on flattens out, use a drill stab. If you do it right, you should hit the Sir Kibble with the final strike of the attack, which won't kill the Sir Kibble, but will launch it a significant distance to the right. Next, dodge through the Sir Kibble and the Blade Knight. Once on the right side of the Blade Knight, run into it twice, making sure that you let the invincibility frames wear off before running into it the second time. If you've done it right, you should be left with a Sir Kibble and a Blade Knight standing right next to each other, ready to be inhaled. Now all you have to do is repeat the process until you get your desired copy ability. I went for cleaning. Not because cleaning is actually that useful, but because I could then turn cleaning into a friend and use that friend to upgrade my sword to a bluster sword. Bluster sword is amazing. It's basically the Luigi backflip of this game. With bluster sword, we get the entire move set of sword, except all the moves give us greater mobility. Example 1, the upward slash, which now shoots Kirby way higher than before. Also, this upward slash actually does allow us to fly infinitely. The drill stab now goes much further than before as well. We even have some other jump replacement options in the form of the spin strike and upward spin strike, and all that isn't even the best part. We can now fly infinitely with just regular attacks in the air, which if we do need some extra height, can be easily comboed into an upward slash. So in short, Bluster Sword gets us past this ladder, and the rest of level 1, and most of the rest of the game.
yeah. Blaster Sword makes all those levels not only possible, but easy. We're now left with only five mandatory levels that can be considered challenging. Friendly Field, Heavenly Hall, Planet Earthfall, Jambadra Base, and Kirby Star Allies. These five levels can't be solved with Bluster Sword alone, so we'll need to take a closer look at each of them. Let's start with Planet Earthfall. Planet Earthfall is a mostly peaceful, fall-themed level featuring leaves, chests, cleaning dudes, and an old enemy of ours. Something with evil fused into its very being and components. That's right, I'm talking about... Keys. <laughs> if you're unacquainted, the reason these keys are such a pain is because when you're holding one, your attack button, you know, the button we use to activate our jump replacements, instead throws the key meaning we can't achieve upwards mobility while holding a key. To make matters worse, it seems that Kirby's been skipping Arm Day since Return to Dreamland. I mean, just look at this pitiful throw. And if that wasn't bad enough, our old enemy Keys have teamed up with a new foe in this level. Slopes. <laughs> While the Mario Maker community may be rejoicing at these things as of late, we most certainly are not. Because when a thrown key lands on a slope, it bounces off of it as if it had hit a wall. And guess where one of the keys we need to use to get through this stage is located? If you guessed in a valley surrounded by slopes, then you'd be right! And I could not find a way to get this key up the slope and to the door. Alone. Luckily for us, the old trick of having a second player hold the key, then be teleported to player 1, still works. And so, by temporarily snapping our controller in half, we can get past this level jumpless. Alright, that's one of five down. Now which level to try next? How about Friendly Field? Sounds nice enough. Welcome to Friendly Field, home of... the worst nightmare of a no-jump run. A friend circle. Just looking at the control screen of a friend circle ought to clue you in as to the main issue here. Literally, the only thing you can do as a friend circle is jump. This is a disaster, and as far as I know, there's no way to skip a friend circle segment in a mandatory level, which means the best we can do is jump as few times as possible to get through the segment. In this case, one two, three times. So, now we're up to two regular jumps and three friend circle jumps. Why am I counting them separately? I just think it's a useful distinction since friend circles are such a departure from the regular gameplay. That's not to say I don't think they count as jumps, but I would consider them as lesser jumps, I suppose. Moving on, I suppose it's time to reveal that friend circles are the issues in Heavenly Hall and Jambadra Base as well, leading to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 more friend circle jumps. Which brings us up to a total of 2 regular jumps and 35 friend circle jumps going into the final challenging level, which actually happens to be the final level of the game for once. Kirby Star Allies. Here we are. Our final challenge. The fight against Void Termina. Our biggest issue here occurs during phase one of the fight, when Void Termina is in his, like, Colossus form. During this phase of the fight, one of Void Termina's attacks is him jumping and sending out a shockwave in all directions. Normally, you would avoid this attack by jumping, but we can't do that. Instead, we just take the hit and hope we can deal enough damage quick enough to end this phase before we die. And we can! This doesn't leave us with much health going into the next phase of the fight, but that phase has a bunch of food in it, 
so we can heal to just about full before continuing the fight. All future phases drop the jump attack, which means unless you count these QTEs in the finale as jumps, which you shouldn't because, I mean, does this look like a jump to you? We can beat Void Termina without adding any more jumps to our turn. But let's not let the joy of overcoming the final boss without jumping overshadow the fact that, as unfortunate as it may be, it is not possible to beat Kirby Star Allies without jumping. As far as I can tell, the minimum number of jumps required to beat Kirby Star Allies is two regular jumps and 35 friend circle jumps. Which isn't terrible, especially when you consider that no regular jumps are required to beat the game after the first screen. But hey, we put in our best effort, pulled out some neat tricks, and achieved a respectable result. And I am looking forward to the next challenge for us to test our metal against, and I hope you are too. In the meantime, you can try out this challenge for yourself and see if maybe you can shave off a couple more jumps. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to check out some of the other challenges I've already done, like Kirby's Return to Dreamland without jumping. Or if you've got ideas for future challenges for me to attempt, leave a comment. This challenge was actually suggested by quite a few people, so I might actually do it. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe so if your suggestion becomes a video, you can be notified that it exists. But anyways guys, until next time, I've been Simicraft, and I'll catch you in the next challenge video I craft up. Goodbye.